Good morning and welcome to Peace Out, where we are all learning together to peace out. I'm practicing this morning. This weather change has Chris breathing funny. You know how it does. <laughs> so I've had lots of opportunities this morning to start pra to practice. I can't say I've mastered it, but at least I'm still working toward it. Right? That's the cool thing about God. He is so patient with us. He's like, you know what? I'm just right here. As much as you think you need me, you need me more, but I will operate in your life. I will be with you as much as you will allow me to be, right? So we are talking this week about uh, things that people who thought they were smarter than God, people who maybe his, you know, God would ask them to do something and they, they wouldn't think they could do it. That's what we're going to kind of talk about this morning. But I, I think it brings me some comfort to know that God is much smarter than me. It doesn't take a lot, right? But God is so much smarter than us. He already knows even the questions we have. He already knows we're going to ask them, right? So was, this morning, our character, we'll talk about several characters this week, right? And the, we talked about Jonah and, and uh, I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at them myself right now. But right now we're going to, we talked about Jonah yesterday. I know because Jonah thought he could outrun God. He thought God couldn't see him. He thought God couldn't find him, but God went with him, right? And then when he was in the belly of the well, he looked up and said, God have mercy on me. And he's like, wow, you even heard me from this place. That's an amazing, I love the story of Jonah, as you can tell. We're going to talk about somebody different today. Talk about a, talk about a fame, uh, one of our favorite Bible characters, right? The one that everybody knows about. Like everybody knows about David Glad. Everybody knows the story of Jonah. Everybody knows the story of Moses. And even if, remember when I was a kid, I think they still do it. Sometimes some of the stations, they would show the Ten Commandments, that movie every year, Yul Brynner and all those guys, right? Every year. Was it Yul Brynner was in that one? I don't remember. Anyway, but they showed the Ten Commandments every year, but Moses Christ, they show it every year on Easter, right? They show the Ten Commandments. And uh, so, we, you know, we got the story every year. It was one of the big stories of the one of the big videos back in the back in the day. It was one of those movies you look forward to just once a year because that's the only time you were going to get to see it. But everybody kind of knows the story of Moses. We, he's he's kind of an icon even for the world. We understand right, but he thought he knew more than God. <laughs> he really did. Look at this. Okay, so in Exodus three, Exodus four, now Moses has he, Moses killed someone, and he was he was standing up for his people, and the Egyptian was oppressing and beating an Israelite. So he just, out of anger, he killed the man, hid the body, and then he went to the wilderness. He got out of Egypt because he was afraid they would kill him because he killed someone, right? He, he thought he'd messed everything up. Have you ever been in that spot in your life where you thought for sure you had messed everything up and there was no way God could redeem it, right? That's never, never the case. It doesn't matter. So here Moses is on the backside of the wilderness. He's been back there a long time and he sees the burning bush and God calling to him from the bush. Hey, Moses, come talk to me for a little bit. Right. And so it, I'm not going to talk so much about that part as much as we're going to talk about how Moses reacted to what God said. So God tells Moses, I want you to go back. I want you to get my people out of Egypt. You are the man of the hour. You are the one I'm going to use to deliver my people. And one of the first things God said was, who, or what Moses said, excuse me, one of the first things Moses said, and God says, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh, we're in Exodus 3.10, and you go to my people, go get my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, God told him that, and he was with it enough to hear God telling that, speak that to him. And he said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt. He asked a question, like God didn't have the answer to it. I will say, uh, God didn't answer that question the way Moses thought. God didn't go, well, who do you think you are? Well, let me just tell you who you are. You know, <laughs> God, said, God just said, I'm going with you. God was prepared for that question. He knew Moses was going to go, who, who am I? Who, who am I to go get your, your people out of Egypt? He doubted himself from the get-go. He he didn't he, he and he was out. He he's talking to God for crying out loud. And God's telling him, "Go get my people." And Moses is going, "Who, who me? Who me?" And then a little while longer later, in verse thirteen, uh, he says, well, "What am I supposed to say to them?" Well, I don't have anything to say. And God says, "That's when God says, tell them I am sent you.' Because see, I am is that little present continuous thing. It's always in the moment." He's 
He was in the past. He's going to be in the future, but he's right now too. I am always right now. Go, you know, I, that's who send, is sending you. I, I am sending you, <laughs> right? And so he had that second question. Then he had the third question. It was, what if they don't believe me? Now, the interesting part, the interesting thing about this question, I was rereading this again to get ready for this morning. This is, that's chapter four, verse one. Moses says, what if they don't believe me? But back up in verse 18 of chapter three, God already answered that before Moses answered it. He said, they will, let me find it, verse 18, they will pay heed to what you say. And you with the elders of Israel will come to the king and you will say this to him. They, but he already told him in verse 18 of the previous chapter, they will listen to you. And now Moses is going, but what if they, what if they don't believe me? What if they, you know, listen to what I'm saying? That was question number three. I wonder if he thought he knew more than God. Did he think God didn't already answer those very relevant? I can't say I wouldn't have the same questions, right? But was he smarter than God? Was Moses smarter? And then and Moses still had another question. In verse 10 of chapter 4, he says to the Lord, I have never been eloquent of speaking. I'm not a good speaker. And some say he even stuttered and things. He, you know, he's like, I don't even speak. He said, can't somebody, then he finally says, can't somebody go with me? And God's going, I already sent Moses, I already sent Aaron. I already sent him. As a matter of fact, go get him, go meet him because he's almost here. So God had already covered every question Moses had. Moses wasn't smarter than God. He couldn't outsmart God. He couldn't trick God into saying, oh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> Why was Moses asking all these questions? Why was he doubting? You know, I mean, but I have to say, I've probably been more like Moses in the things I felt led to do because it's always like, what? How is that going to work? How am I going to do that? I'm a nobody. I'm the, what are you talking about, God? And God has never said, oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. Never mind. <laughs> right? He didn't say that to Moses either. Moses has all these great questions and God didn't answer any of them with a, Ah, I didn't think of that, Moses. Ah, you are so smart. You're just so smart. I'm glad you asked that. Oh, God already had an answer. And here he says it. He's like, he's like, it's he, first of all, he told he told him here when he said, uh, I'm not I'm not a great spe speaker. God said, Who made your mouth? God answered with a question. And I, you I'll tell you this right now. When God answers with a question, it's not because he's looking for information, it's because he's wanting you to get some information, right? But he said, who made your mouth? Who made you, who even made your mouth? And he goes, don't worry about it. Aaron's already on his way. I already sent Aaron. So Aaron had already come out to Moses. And so maybe Aaron was following better than Moses, right? And so, but God had already covered his in, the inadequacies that Moses had felt. He, and he was, he was saying, who am I to go? What if they don't listen to me? I don't, I'm not a good speaker. Or, you know, I have to go by myself. I don't know. All these whiny things. And God never said, I didn't think of that. God never said, yeah, you're right. Never mind. I'll, let me go find somebody else. You're absolutely right. I'll go find somebody else. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's too much for you. He never said that. He just kept working with Moses, even though Moses was kind of like trying to manipulate God into taking it all back. God didn't take anything back. And can I tell you that he still doesn't take things back today? He has made us righteous in the blood of Christ. And and all of our argument, oh, I'm such a mess up. Well, I can't, why, why can't I get this stress under control? Why I got, this is my thoughts this morning. I got all this anxiety, God. How do I get rid of this anxiety? I'm trying to shove it over. I see myself shoving it over to his plate. And then looking, it's back on my plate. I'm shoving it back to his plate. It's back on my plate. Why can't I get through this? What is wrong with me? I have all these questions. And he never says, yeah, you're right. You're just a mess. No, he's like, you're righteous. I've got you covered. I've got you. I'm taking care of you today. Your decisions are going to be smart because you're asking me to, to help you make decisions. You're going to, you know, we get closer to God. He doesn't throw things away. He doesn't throw people away. He didn't throw Moses away. After the third or fourth question, I'd have probably gone, yeah, you're right. Just forget it. I mean, yeah, it'll be easier to work with somebody else because you think you're smarter than me. <laughs> right? Isn't that kind of what Moses' questions were saying? You know, when we say, God, can you really make us righteous? I just don't. You know, it's okay to not get it. But that's what faith is. When I say, God, I... How am I righteous? Because I know these thoughts. I know this these crazy thinking processes that I go through, these these hyperactive, overthinking things I go through. And yet I and yet God's going, I still got you. He never says, Never mind, I forgot. Never mind, I, I can't cover that. Forget it. I'm not going with you this time. Eh, yeah, you're right. 
No, he's never said, oh, yeah, you're right. He's always like, I've got you. He's only got the next question answered. And I got lots of questions. He's fast. I'm telling you, God is fast. Because I've got lots of questions Everything, every time something comes up. And God will never take anything back, including the peace he gave us. He never says, yeah, you're right. You don't have any peace. I mean, you know, just forget it. Let me just forget it. Let me pull the plug on that. All right? No, he never says, oh, forget it. I'm never going to love you again. As a matter of fact, we know in Romans 8, it says he, his love doesn't even weaken over time. His love doesn't change. He's always got us in his heart. We can't, we are not smarter than God. And our questions don't even scare him, right? He was already prepared. He already knew Moses' questions. And didn't that make Moses the perfect candidate? Because he knew he couldn't do it himself. He knew he needed God to go back to Pharaoh. He knew he needed help. I can't do this by myself. And God sent Aaron, even though God was already going with him. God sent Aaron. God already had his, what he perceived as inadequacies. God already had them covered. God already had them taken care of. God was going with him. God's got us covered too. Now, thankfully, he's not sending us to Egypt to get his people. Right? That's not on my list of things I have to do today. Thank God. But no matter what comes today, he's already taken care of us. He's already taken care of it. He's already given us the peace. All we have to do is ask for his wisdom. And that, is, that just opens up us to receive the smarts that God already gave us, right? So he's got us. We can trust him. We're not smarter than him. And he's already ready for your questions. He's already got an answer for the questions you haven't even asked. Isn't that cool about God? Man, he's cool. That's why we can peace out. Peace out. You guys have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow.